You are now watching Zach Lesage, the best place to learn about competitive Pokemon TCG. Let's get it! Yo, what's poppin' peeps? Welcome back to the channel. Zach Lesage here. Yo, today we're gonna be covering over the top 10 decks in Standard. So there's a lot of great stuff to be going over when it comes to this video. Uh, for all of these decks, there are going to be lists and most of them are gonna have reference videos. You can check that in the pinned comment below. Um, beyond that, we're gonna be covering through everything within the top 10. I do have a special surprise video to come out this week uh, that will be uh, covering over some other decks that didn't quite make the top 10. So I'm trying that out. So stay tuned for that as well. With that being said, let's dive right into our number 10 spot. So starting off at number 10, we have Eternatus VMAX, and this deck has fallen a spot from last week from number 9. One thing that you might be noticing in the bottom left hand corner is 180 CP. So that's what I'm going to be using to rank these decks, and a lot of people are asking, why is this deck here, why is this deck not here? So let me explain it to you. I take all of the event data from the Play Limitless websites, and if there's any major in real life events, I will include those. I have a ranking system for events from uh, four players all the way up to 512 players that rank between first, second, top four, top eight, um, top 16, top 32. And there's factors that hit that. So we're only gonna be ranking the top 32 if the event hits 128 players, et cetera, et cetera. So I take that data and I put it into um, a spreadsheet. I calculate it for the entire week. This is where we get our list from. If there's ever a tie, that's where I might be using my personal preference for a deck or anything else like that. But reasonably, I'm giving you straight facts, and I think that my list is incredibly accurate because of that. Um, that being said, Etern is all about using Eternal Zone, getting all those uh, dark Pokemon on your bench, and really swinging hard. I think I've seen a few versions of this deck, some playing Galarian Weezing, some not. I'm not entirely sure the best direction to go with this deck, but I do like Adventures Discovery in any deck that features predominantly uh, V Pokemon and V Max Pokemon. So it seems to be working out pretty well here. Um, this deck's doing well because Mew V Max is good. As long as Mew V Max is doing well, we're going to see some kind of dark counters in our formats. So jumping into our number nine spot, and this one did not make our top 10 last week. Uh, it, it's coming at 200 CP, so slightly above E-Turn, is Turbo Zacian. Now, Turbo Zacian's been doing well, and I think it's mainly been doing well because of one player and one player alone. Pretty much Joshua Sutherland has been taking this deck and seeing some results here and there with it, and has really basically made this deck all of their own on Play Limitless. Now, a lot of players have played this in the past. It's just not incredibly effective in our format right now. Um, it's not that Turbo Zacian is bad. It's just I don't think it necessarily has a great matchup against a lot of the top decks right now uh, you can definitely run into some things where you're like oh i have zam against this or you get an early intrepid sword but uh, for the most part this is a budget version of mu v max and that's not bad by any means it's just not necessarily as good as mu v max at this point so if you are looking for an aggressive deck uh, that is better than this i 100 recommend mu v max if you're kind of balling on a budget and you're trying to get your feet wet in pokemon i think that uh turbo zashian might be where it's at again the strategy is just going to be using brave blade and maybe you can use zamazenta v against some of your opponent's v max pokemon but uh overall i mean this deck hasn't necessarily left our top 20 decks in a while and i think it's a, a solid choice uh for most events it's just might not be the best choice for those same events Jumping into number eight, we have Rapid Strike Malamar. And again, it wasn't in our top 20 uh, before this, but it did um, get a, quite a decent bit of CP for a new entrant, which is 210 CP. So doing slightly better than E-Turn and slightly better than uh, the Turbo Zashin deck. Now this deck really took off when Manu Pango made top 16 at the late night series. And then a few players were like, oh, you want to let Malamar is back? Like we had saw a little bit of a trickle the week before and we saw these Pissimian builds to snipe your opponent's bench Pokemon, but it wasn't necessarily seeing the same success level as what it once was. And I mean, let's be real, Malamar was never the most uh, successful deck or anything else like that, but I think the popularity has kind of trickled from top 16 at late night series, the biggest fusion strike tournament period. Uh, players are now seeing what a valid build looks like for this deck kind of 
trying to get some of that success or experiment with this uh, new deck to them or new to them deck and really just kind of rolling from there. This deck actually has some decent matchups in the format. Sure, you're going to likely struggle against uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu and Jolteon, but you can do well against a bunch of uh, VMAX decks. And I mean, playing a Malamar deck is, is quite fun. Rapid Strike Tentacles, you're showing them all the Rapid Strike cards you have in your hand. I really think it's one of those things where it's a solid deck. Give it a whirl. Uh, I think this deck is probably going to stay within our top... Uh, I don't know, I want to say that it's going to stay within our lower half of our top 10 for the foreseeable future, but a lot of these single prize card decks, uh, you can see how Obstagoon hit, I believe, number 6 last week. It's one of those things where Obstagoon then disappears as players experiment with Malamar or other um, kind of intriguing single prize card decks. So, as much as Malamar and Obstagoon are very different, a lot of players are single prize card deck players or they're playing these interesting rogue decks or new to them decks. Uh, so I think a lot of those decks kind of fit into that category. So that can really sway their numbers to go up or down a lot. So keep that in mind when you're looking through the rankings that single prize cards are almost their, almost their own category. Jumping into our number seven spot, we have Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX. Now this deck has fallen a couple spots from number five and it's got a decent bit of CP. So I think it's one of those decks that's fairly neutral in the format. Players are experimenting with it. If you're an Ice Rider player, you're playing this deck. Uh, this deck is also split between Ice Rider Calyrex with Hammers, which we're seeing here. There is another variant that did not make our top 10 list uh, that plays Ice Rider Calyrex Suicune. So if you're like, yo, you wanna know what I play this deck? I did really well at this event it's because I view them as two separate decks and if there's enough of a difference between two variants that's really where we're going to switch it up. I think this deck is pretty decently well positioned. Um, if you play this deck right you can do well against Mew because of Crushing Hammer and Fan of Waves. Uh, the numbers of Ride of the High King and Max Lance work quite well with this format especially with quick shooting and I mean I, I, I feel like this deck does pretty well against single strike it does okay against Jolteon, um, it, it can do well against Gengar, but again, like you're in a format where it's filled with one shots and this one doesn't really get the one shots. It tries to make up for it with uh, quick shooting and disruption, but it, it is a pretty neutral deck. I think this deck could shoot up a little bit um, further, but like it's probably well, like appropriately placed between the five to eight spots. Uh, when it was at number five, it wasn't necessarily like the low number five, I'll put it like that. It was like, whoa, this deck made number five. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, also, this deck could fall or rise a lot, depending on how players necessarily perceive the two variants of this deck between the straight up build or the one with Suicune V. So keep that in mind as you play out. Again, all these lists are in the pinned comment below. So check that out. And most of them have reference videos if you're looking for a little bit more of a strategy. Barely snubbing out Ice Rider at number seven. At number six, we have Suicune uh, with Ludicolo. You're able to use Enthusiastic Dance and hit hard with Blizzard Rondo. And of course, you have Quick Shooting and Teleon to really make it all work. Uh, this deck did fall from number three, so a little bit of a steep fall. But I think it's because we have quite a few decks in that kind of just like grew over the past week as we understand the metagame a little bit more. So 260 CP sitting pretty firmly, um, but again, it's just one of those decks that I don't know if necessarily know if it's holding its own in the format anymore, uh, because Jolteon VMAX has been popping off recently, uh, largely thanks to Cal Connor, and it's one of those things where Jolteon is lightning type and Suicune is weak to lightning, and Mew VMAX usually can just play fusion strike energy and not really get affected by quick shooting and under bench or play an aura choreo to have a better matchup and i mean of course there's also aggressive decks such as uh rapid strike urshfu moltres where they're sniping away those lo low tads and sawbills and stuff like that so i mean let's let's not talk down about speak and ludicolo i think it's again this is like very similar to ice rider a neutral deck so i think anything between the four, five, six, seven, eight spot is very appropriate for this deck, but I do want to keep that in mind. Again, there's quite a few Suicune variants, whether it's Suicune Ludicolo, Suicune Inteleon, Suicune Ice Rider. Any deck that's really playing Suicune is kind of, I, I'm putting it as its own kind of variant. So if there's a Suicune Inteleon deck, I think that's slightly different than a Suicune Ludicolo deck. Uh, so that's why if you if you think that you played it, this is a Suicune Ludicolo deck quite literally. Um, so 
I think it's good. Um, it, it's not necessarily my first choice for an event right now, but it is fairly neutral when it comes down to any particular format. So if you're not necessarily looking to lose to everything, or if you want a decent shot against most things, uh, this would be the deck for you. We made it halfway through the list and we were coming up at Gengar VMAX. This list, this card did not make our top 10 list last week, but here we are at number five. This deck's going places. Um, I do want to say that I've been one of the only people who've been honest and showing Gengar as a real deck. A lot of people have been saying that it's a bad deck. And I mean, we, we've been really seeing a lot of results from myself, Azul, uh, my teammates, Kel Connor, Gabe Smart. Uh, Vinny Fernandez, a lot of top players have really started to take on this deck because, as I've always said, this is one of the only few decks that has a positive Mew matchup. Sure, you could just sit there and dead draw like any other deck, but um, Mew's a serious problem in our format, and this is one of those decks that can seriously beat Mew. Uh, you're going to be using either um, Fear and Panic or G-Max Swallow Up to knock out your opponent's Pokemon, and I mean, I think this deck is pretty well balanced across the rest of the metagame. Yeah, you're going to lose to Rapid Strike Urshifu. I ran into a tournament last week where I ran into three, and oh, three of them in a row, and I went zero and three. Uh, I was very close to beating some of them, but you're going to lose to what you're going to lose to. This deck uh, has a lot of strengths when it comes to beating Mew, and you could even do well against Single Strike Urshifu and Jolteon and other top decks in the format. So keep that in mind if you are looking for a fresh deck. You can see that this deck had 50 more CP than Suicune Ludicolo in terms of the amount of play that it's been seeing, in terms of the amount of success that it's been seeing, and they're all playing in the same tournament. So it's one of those things where Gengar VMAX is a legitimate threat, and I think this is the type of deck that could go a little bit higher, especially if other players finally start picking it up. Uh, not to say that this is a wave or a bias to start playing this deck, uh, but I think uh, now that it's not just me being the one who's playing it, you got Azul and you have Vinny and Cal and Gabe Smart. A lot of these other top players are playing it. You might want to check this deck out. And if you haven't picked up Gengar VMAX, feel free to pick up some Fusion Strike codes from PTCGO store. You can always use code ZLASSAGE5 to save 5% off your order. That's also in the description. Hopping into our number four, we see Rapid Strike Urshifu with Galarian Moltres. Now, this did not make our top 10 decks last week, um, but it is certainly spiking up this week at uh, 610 CP, so almost double what Gengar had. And I think for good reason, this deck uh, can hold its own against Mew, kinda. It, it does okay against a lot of the decks that are playing Houndour and Sobble and Lotad and all those cards. You have a favorable matchup against Jolteon, and I mean, you even see how Gengar is up there. Like, Gengar, you have a favorable matchup against Gengar. It just seemed like this deck was looking for the right time to kind of pop out and really start seeing some success. So keep that in mind when it comes to a deck. Just because a deck doesn't make the top 10 doesn't make it bad. Um, and that's one thing that I, I'll, I'll leak. You made it far enough in the video. I'm going to start doing the whole top 20. So I'm going to be doing 1 to 10 and 11 through 20 as two separate videos. So you can kind of see where everything else falls. So we'll have more accurate data on the top 20. And you can see where the deck falls or is or whatever. Um, and a lot of it's just due to lack of play. So now that this deck's awesome play, especially with players like Celio's Network, uh, which is Luke Morsa and Cash uh, Vinder Singh and a lot of players just kind of played this deck to success. I think um, the more popular a deck is or a popular um, content creator personality really is like, yo, play this deck. Uh, I think that's really where you're going to see success. So I think uh, this deck seems like it's going to do uh, well. I think it's currently better than the Melanie version. If you're wondering that, I think the Melanie version is better overall, but in our current metagame, it just can't hold its own because it doesn't have the same things. Like if your deck doesn't have a fighting chance against Mew, it, it's almost worthwhile for you to pick a different deck at this point. I don't want to be like, don't play or anything else like that, but like, I know if you struggle against Mew, you're going to have a tough time uh, and you'll, you'll quickly see why once uh, we get to Mew here. Here we are at our number three spot, and falling from number two last week is Jolteon. So you can see from Rapid Strike Urshifu Moltres, this deck has plus 60 CP, so within the same range of decks. And Jolteon VMAX has been seeing a decent bit of success because some players who are playing Mew don't necessarily know how to play that matchup appropriately or don't have the right build for it. Uh, you can hold your own against most of the format, and of course, like, for the same reason that Rapid Strike Urshifu has been seeing a little bit more success, there are those Hound Doers and there's those Sobbles and there's there's those low tads and just like bench setters that you could really like take advantage of. And of course, Path to the Peak is uh, 
quite good if it sticks. Like if you're playing Mew and your Genesect engine ain't working, uh, are you really playing Mew? And that's one thing that we really got to be going over. This deck's goal is to be using Max Thunder Rumble, putting damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon with Quick Shooting or Headbutt Tantrum with Galarian Zigzagoon, and really going from there, Cheryl to heal. The deck is pretty well refined now since we've had a refined list since Evolving Skies. I think this deck again is probably a better neutral deck than what we currently have because you have some decent matchups in terms of Suicune Ludicolo. Uh, so I kind of rank this with the Suicune Ludicolo Ice Rider kind of builds, and this is just the best way to play the deck. I think currently Jolteon is well within the top five decks. So if it slips out of that, it's just uh, probably due to the Rapid Strike Urshifu Rising or a Single Strike Urshifu Rising or something like that. But right now, I think Jolteon VMAX is an incredible spot. Uh, and we just got those new uh, premium promo collections. Uh, as you can see, the art on the Jolteon V in the top left. Uh, there's also the new VMAX that's come out as well. So maybe it's a better time than ever to pick up these cards to get those awesome new arts. And maybe it's a little bit cheaper online. Not sure until the price settles, but uh, would be great nonetheless. Jolteon VMAX is an awesome deck. Here we are at our number two spot, our runner up to the entire top 10 list. And uh, going up from number four last week is Single Strike Urshifu VMAX with Umbreon VMAX. Um, so it has 710 CP, which is again, just slightly more than Jolteon. So you can see that the top four decks, uh, Single Strike Urshifu, Jolteon and Gengar, um, or sorry, not Gengar, Rapid Strike Urshifu Moltres are basically within a hundred uh, cp of each other then you have gengar that is a full 400 below so you can see in terms of play where these decks are getting success and how successful this deck is um it, it's it's really good compared to everything else on this list like if you look at number 10 9 8 and maybe even number seven it has all of those combined uh, to be a better deck than all of them right so you can see how powerful a deck is the goal is to basically use single strike urshvi v max against things such as amazenta v decidui v max pokemon that you want to knock out with the help of single strike energies you got single strike urshvi v to go against gengar v max or you have jo against jolteon v max uh the, the reason for the large umbreon v v max line is because of mew being so um apparent in this format and very powerful and being seeing success um, right now I think this is the type of deck that's probably gonna stay within our top five um, unless of course Gengar being another single strike uh, version with Houndoom and stuff like that were to be able to dethrone this somehow um, in terms of like players who have just been playing this deck forever I don't really see how that's gonna change uh, I, I, I don't think people are gonna make the switch to Gengar is what I'm trying to say I don't necessarily see too much of a difference between those two decks I think it's more of a metagame call but obviously I am one person, and if you want to listen to me, I think they're very, very similar. Uh, but if you don't, by all means, continue to play this deck. It's a solid deck for sure, and it's going to stay a solid deck for the next few weeks at the very least. Here you go. You made it to our number one spot. Uh, also our number one spot from last week. And uh, yeah, that, that CP total is not a typo. 1770 CP. So more than Single Strike Urshifu and Jolteon combined and almost uh, as much as the other complete top four combined, this deck is absolutely bonkers how well it's been seeing success. Um, the version that's seen the most success over the past week has been the turbo version without any peony uh the one that evan campbell and uh ed valencia were able to make first and second with um at the late night series i mean I, my list is heavily based off of the one that evan campbell played um the only change that i made is i cut up boss for an Alice of sparkle i think that's very helpful against the jolteon v max in the format to kind of um use cross fusion strike copy uh psychic leap um, with Mew VMAX, you can kind of chain that, you can get that turn one Meloetta. Um, I, I think that this deck, if anything, like, I think Mew VMAX is very good. Um, I have two full play sets myself, or I have one for myself and one for my wife, Michelle. It's one of those things where I think that this deck might be a little too powerful, or it might be seeing a little bit too much success in the format, and it's kind of a gatekeeper right now. Um, what I recommend is if you want to stop that is to play a bunch of dark decks, or start popularizing Gengar, or even E-Turn, or any deck that just basically beats Mew. Um, we've even started to see some control decks come out um, that Sander Watchcheck have created to try to beat this deck. And I mean, there's definitely ways to beat Mew. I think that's what we have to do in order to like kind of equalize it, because right now this deck is seeing way too much success. 
However, if you are um, new to the game or if you're looking for a way to um, really grow your name as a player, Mew V Max is the type of deck that can take you all the way to the top. I think this particular build is awesome. One thing that I might do is try to include um, Poke Gears in a future iteration of this deck to try to get those Elisa Sparkles out as soon as possible, just so you can use Meletius Echo turn one for 210 damage, knocking out your opponent's Pokemon V. Um, if you're able to do that, I think this deck's just better and better and better. But right now, there's uh, there's only a handful of builds, and this one's been performing the best for sure. If you haven't picked up new cards, again, you can use code ZLASSAGE5 at ptcgeostore.com to save 5% off your next order. Well, that's what we got going on for this video today, peeps. Um, hopefully you enjoyed seeing the new CP ranking for these uh, for these decks. I mean, I think it's something that makes this list a little bit more valid. Like I said, I spent hours on doing spreadsheets throughout the week to figure out what the best decks are. Then I talked to a lot of my other professional friends who are very good at Pokemon. Some of the, <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I just see what the lists are for the best ones. We really discuss. So I'm, I'm really trying to provide you the best list, the most extensive list of uh, the top 10 decks because some peeps are just doing it off their opinion. Mine's uh, purely math based. Um, and I, I, it takes a lot of time. Some of it's a little bit of opinion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you that. Um, the other snippet that I did say is that I will be releasing a top 11 through 20 decks. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a thing, I'm pulling up my side list over here. Uh, we have some decks in there, such as Leafeon, Sylveon, Ray, Shadow Rider, Decidui, Obstagoon. So if you're wondering where those decks go, because I know a lot of you are like, yo, where's this deck, Zach? You will quickly find that out in the next couple days as I figure out the best format for that video. Uh, but stay tuned. It is something that I'm hoping to do regularly, uh, just so you can kind of see where the decks are. And maybe it's going to be, I'm going to post that one at uh, 12 on Monday, and then I'm going to post uh, the top 10 decks uh, at 6 on Monday. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do it, but I always appreciate all of uh, the support and everything. If you haven't already, uh, give this video a thumbs up. It, again, these videos take so much time. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And let me know in your comments what uh, what videos you want to see from me this week. I'll try my best, or if, it, if I don't get them to this week, uh, let me know next week. I try to focus more on competitive content, so keep that in mind. That being said, I'm going to go edit this video, and I'll catch up with all y'all later. Peace out, and have a great day. I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It means the world to me. And my goal with this channel is to spread my love of the game and knowledge with our entire Pokemon TCG community. If you haven't already... Help Signal boost this video to other Pokemon TCG fans by liking it, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Hopefully we reach our goals really soon. Check out this recommended video, and have yourself a great day. Thanks.